Well, hello there, YouTube. It's Monday, June 17th, 2024. And those of you who are following my channel know that that date is significant. And the significance of that date is I have not yet attempted to start this 560SL yet. That's because I had a health scare. That's right. You know, again, we have another issue that goes on. You know, first, I was attempting to start this in May, right? And then I had fuel issues. So we had to put a halt to that live stream. And then I was supposed to do this on the 8th. Well, on the 7th, I ended up in the hospital. And this is kind of a significant thing because two months ago, well, actually in March, I knew I had a problem and I went to a specialist who happens to be my doctor. I'm just gonna be open about what's going on here because I've, you know, I've been missing. I've been out of here for the last two weeks and nobody knows what the heck happened. You know, a few of you have made some comments and say, hey, Tony, what happened, you know? And I've responded and, you know, let everybody know. But what ended up happening really is in March, I had severe back pain and I was having trouble urinating. I'm already being treated by a urologist, you know, for the last several years for what they call BPH, which is a, what a lot of guys get. So I made an appointment <laughs> with the doctor complaining about the severe pain and they took a urine sample and I told him, I said, I think I've got a kidney infection. And he goes, no, no, your urine came out clean. You don't have any urine infection. You know, and I said, man, you know, I'm having trouble peeing. And he goes, yeah. He says, well, let's, let's change your medication. I responded right there and I says, I don't see how that could be. I said, I could pee fine the day before and now I'm having trouble peeing and I have severe back pain. And he goes, well, you know, sometimes you get used to this and that's why you start to have trouble peeing, you know, and the back pain could be that, you know, you're, you're, you're just having trouble. I said, okay. So he changed my medication and sent me home. And I had a follow up with him and I told him, you know, all of a sudden it just stopped and I could pee no problem. I don't think the drug that you gave me made any difference whatsoever. And he goes, well, you know, he says, if you want, you can go ahead and stop the drug and see what happens. This is the kind of response he gets, right? Well, now let's go forward to the night before I'm supposed to go live and start this car for the very first time, right? This will be attempt number two. So that night, all of a sudden, bam, I got the most severe back pain I have ever had. I don't know, maybe I hurt my back, you know, because I work in this garage all the time. I don't know what I did. And it got so bad, I started dry heaving. <laughs> and I told my wife, I said, I, I've got to go to the hospital. There's something not right here. I don't know what it is. You know what? It's got to be my kidney, right? I'm still saying to myself, it's got to be my kidney. And so I go in there at, at, to the emergency room and immediately they, they go and do a CAT scan, right? A CT scan. And the guy comes back and he goes, oh, you got a pretty big stone in there. You know, he says, it looks like it's over eight millimeters. And I go, okay, you know, what do we do? And he says, well, he says, you need to get operated on because you're not gonna pass that the way that it is inside of me, for example. So they said, I need to be operated on right away. And I thought, oh, you know, the first thing that came to my mind is I gotta call my urologist. And how stupid is that? Really, I'm gonna call the guy that put me in the hospital. But I did, <laughs> I called him, I, or I called his office, I should say. And the receptionist says that, uh, you know, he's not in, you know, and, and I says, well, I need to get a, an emergency operation according to the emergency room. And, and she says, well, I'll have his assistant call you, right? Well, the assistant never called me. So I ended up right back in the hospital because I need to have a doctor take care of the situation. <laughs> So it's Saturday morning and I just go to back to the hospital, the same hospital that did my CT scan, and they admitted me and gave me a doctor and they scheduled this surgery for Saturday at 2 p.m. And you know, they reeled me up to the OR, they had me sign all the releases, they explained to me exactly what procedure was gonna be done and that the doctor was on his way and they reeled me into the OR. Everybody's ready. 
And then all of a sudden, my urologist assistant shows up and intervenes and basically says he's the doctor and, you know, he's going to take over, basically. So all of a sudden, this other doctor who's scheduled to do my procedure and everything was just tossed right out of the whole ball game. And now I'm, I'm looking at the, the assistant of the doctor who's incompetent. Why does incompetence follow me? You guys know. I, from machinists to doctors, it doesn't matter. They miss a lot. Now I'm in the hospital and all that's there and the doctor intervenes and then, so all of a sudden this doctor says, uh, uh, we're not gonna do that procedure. And I says, yeah, you're not gonna do any procedure, I told him. I says, I don't know you or, you know, I don't know anything about you. You know, what I do know is that if he's being mentored by a guy who can't diagnose simple things like this, I certainly don't want this guy doing it. So he comes in and basically says, what we're gonna do is put a stint in. He doesn't know, I know that the doctor's on vacation. But he says, and then the doctor will come back later in the week and remove the stint. So I says, no, that's it, you know. I, and, and they said, we never told you, actually my nurse ended up lying for this doctor. She says, we never told you what procedure you are. And I go, well, wait a minute, how do I even know this name? this lipo whatever. I says, you know, it didn't just come to me. And so I start taking out all my tubes, right? <laughs> and they're all freaking out because I'm saying, that's it. You guys aren't going to touch me. There's something, I can't deal with this. And that's exactly what I did. I ended up leaving that hospital. Now I go to another hospital, which is their so-called sister hospital, who, who now also has to perform a CT scan. <laughs> Oh, anyway, so they perform the CT scan and everything, and they find out that this thing's 11 millimeters. This doctor went in there to attempt to do all this. It was fantastic. I had no problems with that part of it. The only problem, of course, I have is that, you know, the procedure was not complete. He went up there, saw how big it was, could not get the laser up and around and all that, so he, too, ended up putting in a stint. You know, this is common. You can put a stint in before, and it's normally done to relax it and straighten out your tubes. So the smaller stone, which you know most people don't have 11 millimeter ball sitting in there, but you can end up passing it. So I have this stent in there and, this, and it's not gonna pass. So tomorrow, unfortunately, I'm back in the hospital and I'm going to have this procedure hopefully completed. And then there's gonna be a downtime. Let me tell you guys, these urologists, they don't know what pain is. They, they honestly do not know what pain is. I actually have a torn disc and it cuts into my femoral nerve. You know, the one that goes down your leg? I mean, it'll drop me right to the ground, bam. And this pain is very similar. <laughs> I'll tell you that. You don't wanna have this. You need to find a competent doctor. You know, the inadequacies of the physical examination, because you know, I started this whole procedure by me of, uh, recognizing that the pain was coming from my kidney and I should see a urologist, who happens to be my doctor I see now on an annual basis, but before I was seeing him every six months because he wanted to run every single test there was, right? to make all kinds of money. You see that part that says abstract? So this is Amer by the American Journal of Medicine. Now these are the details. And this should be really scary to anyone, really. It's not just the US, obviously. You know, I'm sure every single country and journal has got the same reports for their place. So that's all, I, I just wanted to share my experience. Yes, I'm going into the hospital tomorrow. Um, I think my, uh, I show up at the hospital at 12, and procedures at uh, 2.30, and I don't know how long it takes. I know the other one was a couple hours. <laughs> you know, they got some of it out, I guess, on the other side, I don't know. There's a real lack of communication. I'm sure you guys have experienced that here in the U.S. It's a kind of a rampant thing. You know, I'm, I'm healthy otherwise, guys. I, I should not drop dead. I don't know what it is about this car, but it keeps throwing me, you know, Keeps throwing me off course, but you know, I get right back on and, and we're gonna do a live start. I hope you guys join me for that. Uh, I, I don't wanna say what day yet because I don't know, I maybe have to have the same surgery four or five times until everybody's pockets are full and, and then we'll take care. <laughs> you know what I mean. What, what can we do, you know, except look out for ourselves and kind of understand things, you know? I have a specialist for everything. I don't have a primary care doctor. 
And that all started years ago. My primary care doctor miss, not diagnosed me, just doesn't know how to do math. And I was end up, he prescribed three times the dosage that a human should even take. And it was a two year error. And I was sick the whole time in and out of the hospital. And it amazes me that even though you write it down in the emergency room, this is the medication I'm taking. I don't think anybody ever looks at any of that stuff. Yeah, I was in the hospital so many times. And, and then I said, that's it. I can't take it anymore. I feel like I'm going to die because we're dealing with hormones is what was going on at the time. And I saw an endocrinologist and the receptionist, no medical degree or anything, checking me in, asked me about my endo drugs that I'm taking, right? And I told her, and she says, what? are you sure? Are you sure you're, you, you didn't put an extra zero on the end of that? You know, so that was two years of hell. And so that was the end of the primary doctor. Now I had an endocrinologist. What was nice about the endocrinologist, or is still nice, is she's wonderful. Um, she genuinely cares and genuinely tracks my, my numbers. Actually does a complete blood workup every six months. She's the one that said I should be taking a statin because I was starting to get too high. Right? For a period of time, because she watches my blood like a hawk. Right? And then I says, okay, you tell me I need a statin. Now I have a cardiologist. All specialists, right? Yes, I had a urologist. So there you go. That's my point. <laughs> Even when you have a specialist in the industry, like a Mercedes dealer or a Mercedes mechanic, for example, he's a specialist. Oh yeah, he's a specialist, he knows it all. At that point, when you become a specialist, I think, a lot of things go right out the window, right? Common sense sometimes just goes right out the window, you know, because you're an expert. That's just not how it is, you know? We're, nobody's really an expert. You gotta, if you're not still learning, there's something wrong. I'm 65 years old and I learn something every day. You know, I do. Like I learned how screwed up this healthcare system is, right? You know, and why so many people say, I'm gonna go to Thailand and, you know, do a, a health check. <laughs> Just because it's streamlined or whatever. Yeah, it's the same doctors. Why not? You know, if I can spend four times less to have someone kill me, I'd rather do it in Thailand. They kill me for half as much. You know, so my family saves a little bit of money. I just wanted to lay it out there. I'm probably gonna delete this video, you know, because it really has nothing to do with my channel. Um, those that are following me, you know that I work on my 560SL, complete taking apart and I'm putting it back together. That's all. And there's gonna be a first start life here on YouTube. I'd like you guys to join me for that. Subscribe, you know, click the bell, do all that kind of stuff. You know, follow me on this little journey. Hopefully I show back up. You know, if I, if I don't show up, <laughs> You know, what does that mean? I'll be down. It's not like I'm going to be running around in this garage torquing down spark plugs. No way. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell them, listen, you guys give me a morphine drip. As soon as I walk in the hospital, if I feel any pain, I'm going to come up and grab that guy by the neck and I'm going to squeeze it so hard that his eye will just fall out of his face and then I'll laugh for a change. Hey, you guys, I have another video that, you know, you probably don't even watch, right? When I first started this channel, I said, I'm gonna make some stupid, stupid videos, right? Just some stupid videos. So this all started right, right in COVID. That's right, I started all this. So I actually made one of those videos. Oh, can I say that? I don't know if you can say that without getting tagged. But anyways, I made a funny video about that. At least I thought it was funny. Why don't you guys watch that? I'll put it right up here. And then uh, you guys can click on it here and I'll catch you when I get out of the hospital. All right, you guys, thanks again for watching.